Finding out about what a gifted kid is actually like can be hard because every gifted kid is unique in his or her experience. So the guidance out there is very vague with the list of characteristics that they give you. So I thought, let me just show you a glimpse into my son's life, not so you can compare child between child, but so that I can highlight how some of these characteristics on the lists play out in his everyday life. Hi guys, I am Kathleen Lewis. I am a gifted mom to a gifted five-year-old named Steven. So Steven's conversations are really, really interesting. And that's probably one of the big indicators of a gifted kid, the kind of conversations they have compared to the typical peers. So one of the things on the lists out there is advanced vocabulary or sentence constructs. Um, so yes, Steven is using some of vocabulary that most kids don't use until at least middle school, if not high school. And actually, a lot of adults don't use some of this vocabulary. Another example is one day we were in the car as a family driving somewhere and Steven suddenly says, Mommy, did you know that all cars are ferromagnetic? I turned to my engineer husband to remind me what a ferromagnetic material is. And then I have to go back to my son and say, wow, that is really cool. Are all cars really magnetic, ferromagnetic? And then my husband jumps in and we talk about, you know, some cars could be made of aluminum, so they're not ferromagnetic. So the types of conversations we have with him are a lot more in depth than you would expect for a five-year-old. He was having another conversation with a cousin one day. This cousin is, I think, five or six years older than Steven um, and obviously has gone through several grades in school. They were talking about the sun and this cousin said, the sun doesn't revolve. And Stephen said, no, the sun does revolve. And the older cousin's like, no, the sun stays in one place. It does not revolve. And then the adults in the room had to correct the older cousin and say, no, actually your five-year-old cousin is right. The sun does revolve in the Milky Way. So yeah, your gifted child will probably be correcting older children and frequently adults with factual content. Another characteristic on the list of standard characteristics for a gifted kid is the big emotions. And these don't go away. As an adult, I still have big emotions. But the key difference is I have learned to manage them better. And I am seeing that more in Stephen. He is learning how to self-regulate his emotions much better without my help. Um, and side note, I've heard that's a characteristic of gifted kids that yes, they have the huge emotions, but they can actually stop an emotion in the tracks easier than a non-gifted kid or a non-gifted person. Um, I don't know how true that is. If you guys have thoughts, drop it down in the comments. I'd be happy to I'd be very interested in to know what you have to say about that. An example of this self-regulation is we recently had a realtor come to our house because we're thinking about upgrading into a bigger house in, in a year or two. So we wanted to get the uh, realtor's input on small projects we can do around the house to improve its sellability. So I'm telling Steven because he's going to have a realtor come into his house and I want him to know what's going on. And at first he's really excited about the idea of, you know, experiencing something new and going to a new bigger place. But then all of a sudden 
an idea clicks in his head. We just redid his bedroom last winter and made it a space bedroom, one that he really, really loves. He's passionate about this. He's added to this bedroom himself. And I can tell the moment when that idea clicks into his head because a big smile is on his face and then suddenly the tears, I mean, within a second, tears are welling up in his eyes. And he's taking big breaths and big gulps, keeping it all in. And he's like, mommy, if we move to a new house, I won't have my space bedroom anymore. And that gives me the opportunity to then have a conversation with him and say, you're right. That would be a big disappointment. So tell you what, we can try to take your vinyl stickers and projects to the new bedroom. And if they won't work, we'll buy new ones and create a brand new space bedroom. And then again, within seconds, big light up on the face, really excited about it. The tears are gone. So emotions, big emotions. And he is finally starting to be able to self-control them. A big imagination is another thing on the characteristics list. And that is my son to a T. He had swimming lessons this summer. And day one or two, I can't remember exactly which one it was, but it was like one of the first days of swimming lessons. The instructor comes up to me afterwards and says, your son has a huge imagination. It's not your son's doing well in swimming lessons. He pays attention so well. It's your son has a huge imagination. It wasn't a disruptive imagination, but as he's in the pool interacting with this instructor, and it was a small class, I think he had, there were two people, two kids in the class and two instructors. Um, so it was almost one-on-one. -on -one. And um, he is pretending that a Martian spacecraft is coming to the pool and they drop a Martian off and the Martian is following Steven around the pool as he does different activities and different swimming strokes. And I think this was a progressive theme for several days because I saw a second, the second week we were there, I saw the Martian come to a floaty. Gift a kid moment right there. Recording interrupted because he was watching YouTube videos on the YouTube Kids app that I've dropped down for him. And he was talking about a Lego construct about a race car and he saw the spoiler on the back and talking about how the spoiler is helping the car move through the air faster. So that particular video was actually a Lego build. Um, and he is still obsessed with Legos and building Lego kits that are age 10 and up. And I referenced this in my summer update, but he has a Lego app on a tablet that has all this extensive Lego build ideas. And he's obsessively flipping through um, those creative ideas, building his own creations. And then he doesn't really play with them. He doesn't really play with any toys. He has toys like any five-year-old does, but they entertain him for maybe five minutes when I get them out, five to 10 minutes, and he's back to the Legos. And that's what he builds with obsessively all afternoon. I'm not kidding there, all afternoon. So that brings me into another topic. The uh, tendency for a gifted kid to engage with and like more complex ideas, especially theoretical ideas. Steven's obsessed with engineering right now. Astronomy is a favorite subject of his still, but he's gone on to engineering now. Um, and all of the engineering content for his age is boring to him. So I've had to find adult materials or stuff written for middle school or high school. David Macaulay is always a win if I bring a book home from the library written by David Macaulay, they're always a win. So this one, Stephen picked off the shelf from the library for himself, Crossing on Time. It's about steamships and goes into the history of a steamship and then um, the, the steam engine and then the steamship. And he insists on me reading everything on the page. So we've been working through that for a couple of weeks. And there's other books like that, that he wants the full engineering details. On YouTube, I found some adult videos um, with technical engineering information in them. Um, Lessix, Lasix, Lasix is one channel that's really great about that. And I've given him a series on how the Burj Khalifa was built and the reasons why they did some of the engineering the way they did. He's obsessed with those videos. 
Um, so the only imagine imaginative play he does is essentially taking block towers and pretending he's building the Burj Khalifa and then knocking them down. That is really the only way he plays imaginatively. Some kind of technical and um, complex imagination play. So I've referenced this already, but on the list of characteristics is, yes, ability to learn information quickly. And that leads them to advanced content fairly quickly. So this summer, I gave him two elementary science textbooks right here. This is um, ocean animals, ocean swimming creatures, and this is flying creatures. It's got um, birds and bugs in there. And he listened on his own initiative to those audiobooks during lunch this summer. I did not push that on to him. So gifted kids want information. They are desperate for information. And it's not just kids, adults too. We need to fill our minds with information. And right now the easiest way for Stephen to do that is an audiobook. So yeah, he blazed through essentially two elementary years worth of science curriculum within a month and a half this summer on his own initiative. But the desire for information goes a little bit beyond that even because as I said we were reading this book this summer which was his own pick and in this book there's a reference to the Queen Anne and so when I was reading about the Queen Anne I immediately connected in my mind to the Titanic and so I briefly told Stephen you know there was a bigger ship than the Queen Anne called the Titanic and people thought she couldn't sink that she was impossible to sink that she was an engineering water and couldn't sink and on her first voyage across the Atlantic she hit an iceberg and sank and he's like really how and so that is a spark moment for us to go off and research that more. His question of how in the world did it happen? Did it actually happen? Not just, oh, that's cool, it happened, but he wants the details. So I pull up a National Geographic video um, that built a computer model on how it struck the iceberg and then broke apart and sunk into the ocean. We um, watched another video online of what the Titanic looked like as it was being built. People, pictures of people who were on the Titanic, and then of course, videos of it being sunk later. And he was, he was enamored and obsessed with the idea. We could have kept going. Um, and that is how a gifted kid is when it comes to content and education and learning. Typically, they want the deep details they are so curious that you can theoretically spend hours a day on a subject that is interesting to them. But the key there is it needs to be deep, not repetitive, not shallow, because that is when the gifted person starts latching on and making all these connections to everything else already in their brain. And that's when it starts getting really fun with the conversations you have with your kid, the in-depth conversations, and then months later, more conversations that come up when they're listening to an audiobook that is completely unrelated to anything educational. It's completely on, um, it, it's How to Train Your Dragon, and it's just a fun, silly book. But there's things in there that your child comments on about the physics of something. And yeah, it's fun. And my husband and I just turn to each other and give that little, you know, parent chuckle and smile of this is so much fun experiencing this. So that is life with a gifted five-year-old. I have a new one we can listen to. I like the new one. Okay. Or the Titanic one. Or the Titanic one. So which audiobook? Titanic or How to Be a Pirate? Titanic. Okay. 